Yeah, here we are. Here we are. So uh, there's your there's your Christmas tree behind you. Well, that's one and there's two. Oh wow! You have t- you have two Christmas trees. I got two Christmas trees. Yeah. What little what, dream? The back of me has the train going around it, and <laughs> it's white lights. I'm not a big fan of white lights. I like colored. But mm. I got so many ornaments that I had to get another tree. So uh, one is uh, one is the white light tree that you don't like, and the other one is for you specifically. Yeah, uh, uh, but I love my ornaments. I'm a big uh, Santa collector. Oh, I saw a table full of Santa ornaments. So you have like a, a separate table of ornaments as well. Uh, that's just a small table. I, I had. Um, I have no idea what I had, but it's got to be over a thousand Santas. That's just. That's a fuck ton of Santas, Joe. I yeah, love I it. <laughs> Pod. 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 Podcast. Hi, I'm Matt Lee. And I'm Vince Mancini. And this is Pod, Pod Yourself a Gun. A gun. A Sopranos podcast where Vince Mancini and I go through every single episode of The Sopranos and talk talk about about it. it. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this very special episode of Pod Yourself a Gun for the first time in the history of this podcast. We have an actual cast member from the sopranos on the show that's it, it right it only took us six seasons amazing it, <laughs> yeah it only <laughs> took us hours and hours of our life uh countless sopranos songs in order to get someone who's actually been on the show to notice today our guest you know him of course as Gino, the guy who bought some stuff at the bakery that one time. <laughs> <laughs> also, as Vito Spadafore, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Ganascoli is here. How you doing, Joe? Matt, Vince, how are you? What a pleasure. I'm so glad I made it happen. Yeah. You did. Yeah. You did the Somehow, legwork. We did nothing, so, but uh, we, we have did. an email address, so that's something. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. That's true. So, so somehow... Our podcast, uh, you know, caught your eye and you said, and you said, what is this? A Sopranos podcast? The only Sopranos podcast in existence? I I should reach out and say hi. So is that, is that how it, is that how it went down? Uh, Almost, almost, just like that. (laughs) Uh, I I can't tell you how many uh, podcasts I get asked to do and I don't do them. No. And there was another one by uh, cast members. That was seemed to be pretty popular, but I didn't do that. Um, I wouldn't do it. I refused. <laughs> you, uh, this and you decided this one instead. I decided to do this, and I don't know why. It just caught my eye, and <laughs> there we are. So um, we'll, take it. we'll take it, dude. That 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 feels that feels good for us. I mean, here's the thing: we've been telling all of our listeners that this is the only Sopranos podcast. So uh, as far as as far as our listeners know, there is no other podcast out there about the Sopranos in existence, you know? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> you know, most of them are living under a rock and they probably mm-hmm. uh, don't uh, know of any other. Oh, so for I, sure. I, I'm with you. Yeah. Most <laughs> of our listeners do not go outside. Um but uh, yeah, thank you for coming on. We just wanted to, you know, ask you some questions uh, about The Sopranos, uh, being that this is the first time we've had a cast member on. Uh, the yeah. first, the first question that I always uh, ask every guest of this podcast is: um, uh, Are you a fan of The Sopranos? The show? Yeah. Um, yeah, I became a fan. Um. <laughs> um I don't watch it now like so many people do watch. You know, people email me and, and direct message me all the time that they're rewatching it. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, for several reasons. Um, but uh, when it was on, I watched it like uh, millions of others. Oh, nice. Is nice. It, is it hard to see like an older version of yourself or uh, is it just more? Uh, to, 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 Two reasons. One is, well, maybe three. Uh, I don't like seeing Jimmy, you know, mm, um, sure. on the screen. And my hips 
that walk uh, brings back painful memories. Mm. And as soon as they killed me, I had my double hip replacement done. So that's interesting. So you actually, um, in the show, you had you said multiple times as Vito, um, I was supposed to have hip surgery. Uh, this is I, something you actually said in the episode, Mo and Joe, when you're like taking a siesta. Uh, right, 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 right. And, and I think uh, that's the only time we refer to the hips, I think. Mm. Yeah. So so that means, so that's a real thing. You actually had to have uh, hip surgery. Yes. And, um, you know, many a times um, if something was happening in your private life, uh, they would incorporate it into the um, the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So did you... So, did you end up delaying that like for like the shooting schedule or anything like that? Or was it? Um, yeah, because I didn't know how long it would take me to recover. Mm -hmm. I actually could have done it during the season. I, I didn't know how long it would take me to recover. And I wound up recovering pretty much like in a month. Hmm. So how the, are the hips good but, now? Oh, I, well, that happened in maybe 06. Yeah. Yeah. And I play golf uh, almost every morning, and I walk the course. Oh, nice. And, yeah, and I carry my clubs. And um, I couldn't take a step without uh, unbelievable pain. Mm -hmm. So compared to that and now where I am, uh, it was the best move ever. You mentioned uh, you mentioned Jim Gandolfini, and uh, one, one thing I have, I've I never have seen him in real life, and just like in the, in the show, uh, I've sort of noticed that he has these giant like catcher's mitts for hands. Yeah, like was he just yeah. a large guy? Like, what was he? What was his presence like uh, in in person? He was just a you know a big bear of a guy, um, you know six three. Uh, I don't know what his weight was. I venture to say 240, 260 maybe. Not even sure. Um, he was pretty much in shape. He was just a, a, you know, just a big man, you know? Yeah, he's he's always an in, like an intimidating presence on the show. It's one of those things where um, the way every scene he does opposite anyone, he always seems to um, tower over them and then also just like have this like, um, I don't know, very intimidating presence. Was that, was it, uh, was working with him the same way or like uh, when the camera was off, was he just a, uh, he seems like he might've been a gentle giant. He was very, um, I don't know, low key. Um, you know, he didn't come off as imposing when, uh, you know, he was funny. He was, uh, affable. Uh, um, he didn't come over that sort of intimidating off camera hanging yeah. out with him, you know, but yeah. he did have that. Um, yeah, I'm curious to know that now that you bring that up, um, who was like sort of that uh, same kind of, uh, you know, I guess maybe even some bodyguards were probably smaller than him. Mm. I know they had Tony Saragusa on who used oh, to yeah. play for the Ravens. Um, he was a big, a big guy, but not many were in uh, as big as uh, Jimmy in stature. Yeah. Yeah. So, your you talked about them incorporating uh real life things with the actors into the into the show but like the, the whole veto arc where he's gay that was that was your idea right like was that that was something that you'd pitched to uh david chase mm. so i was obviously covered i was uh, you know gino the first season yeah right i had the, the good fortune of them bringing me back as veto why i don't know but forever grateful i got to kill jackie jr the end of season three which was great you did that was awesome that was you know someone yeah. had to do it and i was glad yeah. it was Vito. Uh, that was a big moment <laughs> um and all the guys uh loved it you know, all the girls hated it <laughs> oh sure and um you know as an actor you're always trying to get more work hopefully you're in more scenes you have a chance to you know, show you can act. Now I was like, I'm a self-taught chef and I was a self-taught actor. And um, I didn't suggest it to David Chase himself because, you know, he, I really I never really interacted with him. But mm. one mm. of the writers were always on set 
and probably the writer that wrote that episode. And this time it was, oh, I think Robin Green and Mitch Burgess were writing partners, but they were married together. Mm. They were married to each other. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, uh, you know, well, you got to do it sort of like on the down low. You don't want to show like, hey, I got this idea right. and I think it'd be great so I could get more acting and scenes and stuff. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you don't want to come off like a douchebag. Right. You don't want to go in there and be like, what if I kill Tony and then now <laughs> yeah. the show's about me? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> so I had to do it on the down low and I was reading a book called Murder Machine. Mm -hmm. And um, true story about, and, uh, about a crew in Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. And one of the characters in it was gay. And I thought that was like, wow. I was like, wow. That's, uh, you know, it's a gay mobster. And I said, I'm in a mob show. And that'd be kind of interesting. Maybe I'll bring it to their attention and say I'd be willing to do it. Well, it took them about two years for it to come to fruition. But it changed my life. Thank yeah. God they did it. It's not what I had in mind the way they portrayed it. Hmm, but sure. I'm glad they did. It made them a little more sympathetic. And, um, you know, the scene with the security guard, you know, I was on the wrong end of that scene. Right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> is that how you found out? Like they passed out the script and then all of a sudden you no, like no. read that I'll scene? Tell you, I'll tell you, it's always, <laughs> for some, well, I know the reason they stopped giving the scripts to the actors. <laughs> um, one of the actors uh, got a little uh, um, tipsy so to speak, left the script in a cab and they freaked out um, because everything was highly secretive. Sure. So um, they just gave us our sides. You know, the, the, I'm sure Jimmy and Edie got their scripts. Mm -hmm. But uh, they just gave us our sides, the one that were in the scenes. And the, and the crew got the... Um, scripts because they had to prepare for it you know right. hair makeup props uh so on and so forth costume so we all had our little moles and we'd ask them hey what's going on next episode am yeah. i getting am i in it i have some good stuff and my guy would say no you know you're in it you're not in it oh you got some good stuff oh you got some good scenes no you're not getting killed so for one time i asked him and uh, i said what's going on he goes oh you got some good stuff going on you're in it <laughs> And do I get killed? No, you don't get killed. I said, oh, good. I oh, can't wait to read it. Because, oh, but by the way, you're going to be blowing a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I go, what? Because now I'm thinking, one, holy shit, they're doing it. And two is, my fucking friends are going to torture me in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... so <laughs> Uh, sure enough, I get to the, uh, hey, once I knew it was true, I get the sides and sure enough I am. I get to the studio for the read through and everybody's waiting downstairs and Sirico, Paulie Walnut says, uh, hey, you know, my friend Joe, the cocksucker <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Stevie Van Zandt says, Joe, they're going to break your balls in the neighborhood. And Jimmy took me aside and says, listen, you're not comfortable with this. We don't have to do it. Uh, we'll go talk to David. So I said, you know, I'm kind of asked for it. Not what I had in mind, but as long as they don't treat it like the Russian, um, <laughs> right. you know, I'm okay. And so they said, look, we're not going to uh, we're gonna do that scene. Nothing else on it. But next year is going to be a big year for you. So that's how that all came about. Wow. So when... So later, like when you actually, you know, when, like towards this arc that we've, we've been talking about uh, in these latest episodes, um, like when you're actually in a relationship with with this guy, like were they did they audition uh, different guys for uh, the firefighter role or was that just like. So, so um, John Costello, uh, as you know, passed. Yeah. May he rest in peace. <clears throat> he was an old, not an old, but he was a well-known New York actor. He's a firefighter. Um, and uh, I actually knew him hmm. um, through a friend, a mutual friend. And we actually worked together on something small. And he was really respected. And the figures that um, Georgia and Walken, and even Sheila Jaffe would know him because they knew the New York actors. 
So when I walked in, they told me that lunch, we want you to come upstairs and read with uh, who's going to be, you know, whoever it is. I was relieved to see it was John Costello. It was someone I knew. So it wasn't sort of awkward and stuff, you know. Yeah. I will say that um, there was one scene when we were rolling around in the hay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the bikes? And I said, uh, Johnny, you got to do something with the fucking mustache <laughs> because it's going in my mouth and I'm going to vomit. <laughs> so uh, hair and makeup fixed that. They tried to fucking brush it up as much as they could. <laughs> I said, yeah. just let's fucking do this and let's get it over with. <laughs> did, so. did, you, did you tell him, like, you have to, like, shampoo it or something? Because I can taste last night's dinner on this and it's just too much. It had a funky <laughs> taste to it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, did you end up getting as much shit from the guys in your neighborhood as you imagined uh, that you would, like, after, after these episodes aired? Uh, well, you know, guys from Brooklyn, just like, you know, the Sopranos, just like Italians in the neighborhood, they like to break balls. Sure. Uh, you know, if I had a fucking argument with somebody, they'd say, well, what are you going to do now? Blow me? <laughs> uh, uh, but for the most part, they knew it was acting. Sure. And, uh, I, I had some real guys in the neighborhood. I know real guys. And, um. They started giving me dirty looks, you know, when I was in a club or a restaurant. I was like, what the fuck is up with them? They go out, you know, the pot. They don't like what you fucking, you know, the pot you're playing. I go, what the fuck? It's acting. It's, go, it's yeah, a fucking TV show. Yeah. I mean, they go, yeah, but they don't like it. And I go, ah, what well, the fuck they want me to do? So, you know, it is what it is. And so, you know, those are the guys that are knuckleheads. But they were real guys. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, they broke balls for a while for the most part. Yeah, it was I, all right. It was good fun. I think that's something that the the Sopranos does really well uh, is showing the homophobia that surrounded. I think uh, a lot of the people in this like particular culture where uh, everyone has they they're so homophobic that even the portrayal of a gay man on TV, they're like, I don't like it. I just don't. I, I don't agree with this. And it's like, yeah. that's... <clears throat> well, sometimes if it really bothers them, I think they're like, maybe, you know, I, I, you know I'm not fucking Freud here, but... Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think they're like... So uh, I think they got like, you know, they're on the fence. Now, as far as me, I mean, I was in the restaurant business. I lived in New Orleans. Oh, sure. You know, I worked in a gay restaurant. I worked in Manhattan restaurants. If you're not, if you have a problem with gays, you shouldn't be in a restaurant business. Yeah. So I, I'm the type of guy living that live, you know, as long as it doesn't interfere with me and, you know, you know, I don't even mind you even coming off to me. Yeah. But, you know, I'm straight, so we're, we're good. I worked yeah. in a gay restaurant that was owned by gays, frequented by gays, and me and my this kid Danny from the Bronx were the only two straight guys in the kitchen. And we used to tell him, hey, just you know, uh the waiters, bring all the girls back here because you know, we want to meet them. And they would be like, Oh, that's Danny, that's Joe. And I was like, you know, I was in I was young. I was in shape and you know, and uh they were always flirting with us, but all they, they had all those girls that you know that work with haircutters and, and fashion and so on. <laughs> this restaurant, it was a happening place. And we were fucking making out like bandits. It was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I didn't forget what the question was. But, uh, was yeah, fine. so I never had a problem with the whole thing. Yeah. So, like, in this episode, uh, you actually, this is the episode that we're discussing uh, this week is the one where you actually make uh, Johnny Cakes a nice dinner. Um, and I think you made him uh, some pasta vadan and uh, and some pork chops with the vinegar peppers. I was I was curious if you had any like input into the menu choices of the food that they uh, chose to show you making on this. You know, during the course, I think earlier my my cookbook novel had come out. Um, they knew I had a restaurant. They knew I was a chef. You think they would have liked? Asked, you know, like, hey, what do you, you know? Even my knife skills that I had to show off to the director, but I got a uh, close up. I think I'm slicing mushrooms or it's something. Yeah, you're cutting an onion there. 
cutting an onion. I go, you know, I was a chef. I mean, you should be, I know how to saute. I know how to flip the food. I mean, get on it because <laughs> you don't need a double. I'm doing it. It's me. They didn't really ask. And so we showed a little, but no, they didn't ask me about the food. I wasn't even sure what pasta badan was, um, <laughs> you know, pasta with potatoes, which is a real peasant dish. <laughs> and pork chop and vinegar peppers is well known. Um, not something I ate at home. Uh, either of those dishes. Um, but people always ask them about them. And, you know, I, when I do my uh, cooking uh, jobs, I should probably even incorporate that. I never even thought about it. But nobody asks, why don't you make the pork chops with vinegar peppers? My mm. my stuff's a little more uh, elite or uh, upscale than that. So so you said you were going to make uh, dinner for your daughter later today. What are you, what are you making tonight? Uh, I, I don't do anything. She, you know, like any, she's 12 years old. Oh, so, yeah. you know, what do they like to eat? You yeah. know, the same thing. It's uh, mac cheese. Um, yeah, I am, you know, making a taco. I'm not even a big fan of tacos, but, you know, something not too heavy because she's got dance. Um, oh, yeah. She doesn't really, you know, I, I wanted to try new things, but. You know, I don't want it to uh, be obsessed with food. Oops, sorry. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah. I'm, I, listen, she eats sushi, so that's his stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, I got an eight-year-old stepson. He loves sushi. It's a it's an expensive thing for kids to be into, but they seem to like it. I I, well, I, I go to the, the buffet. Yeah. Okay, oh, right. nice. <laughs> So, so I read that like when you part of the reason that you got into uh, acting after being uh, a chef was that you lost money on a on a, on a football game like that you were gambling on. Yeah, I was a degenerate gambler um, <laughs> back in the day. Um, I was I was ma- I was in a restaurant. I was making a lot of money, and uh, you know I'm a huge sports fan, so. You think you know sports, you can figure it out, you can tell who's going to win or lose, uh, you know, and you can't. And uh, this is back in 1990, and um, um, you didn't have the access to games like you do. So if you want to bet the game, you bet the ones that are on TV, Giants, Jets, and Sunday Night Football. And Giants were going to the Super Bowl, and – of course, they're resting their starters, and it was a big line. And of course, I took the Giants. They got cream. And I took, I don't know, it was a Jet somebody, and I don't know. I had the losing game, and I was betting big money. And the Sunday night game, he tried to get even, and I got buried. And uh, three days later, I was in LA. I cashed out, paid my paid my bets, and uh, um, moved to LA. So, like, was when you moved before you moved to LA, was there someone in your life that said, like, hey, maybe you should try acting, or was that uh, something that you'd wanted to do? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not something I always wanted to do. I wasn't infatuated with movies. The usual, uh, you know, Godfather. Uh, for me, Raging Bull was, uh, I, I used to watch it constantly. Yeah. Um, that was my movie. Uh, I was working in a restaurant in um, Manhattan. Um, I must have been 26, 27. A waiter that had a involved started a theater company said, We're doing a play very off Broadway. Would you be right to a for a role? Do you want to come audition for it? And I did, and I got it, and I liked it. And um I said, you know, what do I do now? He says, Why don't you go study with my teacher? I did that for about a year and a half, and I didn't really get much out of it, what he was teaching. Uh, but I was infatuated with him because he was so off the wall and the way he taught. I enjoyed watching him teach. But not really what he was teaching. And I lasted about a year and a half because he throws everybody out of the class, <laughs> takes them back. But he was really well respected. And, um, yeah, so I got did that for a year and a half. And then I got back into restaurant business. When I lost all that money, I called up my friend, Tim. His name is Tim Calero. He's working actor. I said, Tim, and he was very religious and is almost going to become a priest. It's almost like Scorsese who wants to become a priest also. Also, And I said, Tim, this is what happened. He goes, listen, I'm house sitting in Hollywood Hills. Come, come and we'll, uh, we'll be roommates. 
And I, I did that. And so when I got there, I was like, wow, I'm in the hills, look at his house, produce his house. He said, don't get used to it. It's going to last two weeks. And uh, we were out trying to find another place after that. But I lasted <laughs> three and a half years in L.A. I mean, the idea of uh, trying to get work as an actor in order to pay off a, a gambling debt, it kind of sounds like, yeah, I'm going to buy this lottery ticket to try right. and uh, pay off. Uh, like, like usually the acting seems like a, a, a long shot of a thing to make money. Yeah. Like a, a, an almost harder but gamble. I, yeah, no, I didn't, but I didn't do that. I paid off my debt because I had investment in the restaurant. Uh, so I, I cashed out with my partners and I paid my booking. Got it. Nice. Yeah. Um, I might as well just drop off the face of the earth and, uh, but I always paid my debt, so I wasn't going to be one of those guys. Yeah, so I paid my debt. Uh, I told my partners the next day, Monday, paid them off Tuesday, and Thursday I was in L.A. So since you were someone who was like familiar with the world of you know gambling and whatnot, and you're someone who grew up in Brooklyn, uh, does does that mean did you actually have run-ins with uh, a lot of these uh, like mafioso characters? Like, were you able to look at the Sopranos and go like, oh, this is true to the people I knew, or or kind of uh, kind of an exaggeration? No, I, I it was true um, in a lot of ways. Um, like I said, I grew up in Brooklyn. I know real guys. I'm talking about like, you know, sons of heads of families. And, right. You know, um, the real five families and who they're with. And you, you know, you read about them. And you know about them and uh, you know how it works. Uh, not that I was around, you know, killings and stuff like that. Oh, but, sure. But guys, you know, I know, you know, these loan sharks and this is a Shylock place. Um, guys that, uh, you know, are made and guys that are connected, guys that want to be, you know, guys that, you know, caught beatings or even killed for messing with someone's daughter or wife. I mean, that happened growing up. Yeah. You know, I think that it was pretty much on the money. Yeah. I think it was no. pretty much on the money and um certainly the lines i mean sometimes i've read so many things that people have said i'm doing a mob thing and i go nobody talks like that yeah. nobody says capiche <laughs> you know <laughs> you know if anything you say the slang or magabe though something like that nobody says uh, you know the dialogue is that's what was so great about sopranos it's always about the written word and yeah and so, and everybody has their favorite lines and right no somebody, nobody actually goes around saying that's a spicy meatball that's just not <laughs> yeah that's just not something yeah, yeah. that the mafia says <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah, they didn't uh, go with the old uh, contrived dialogue yeah cliches yeah cliches and uh you know that's what made it so beautiful yeah. Yeah. Did you know that yearly Medicaid renewals will start again soon? This means millions of people who were enrolled in Medicaid during the pandemic may no longer be eligible for coverage. If this may impact you, the good news is you have options. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield can help answer your questions so you can find an affordable health plan for you and your family. We want you to feel confident you're covered. Click to learn more. Policy exclusions and limitations apply. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is the trade name of Community Insurance Company. You, I mean, you talked about the uh, secrecy of, of the scripts and them trying to keep those under wraps. Uh, was there like a lot of trepidation among the cast, like when you'd get the new scripts? Like were, were, were people always sort of worried about their characters getting killed off and, and losing out on the future paydays? Well, 100%. That was everybody's biggest fear. I mean, you're in a mob show. You know, what's a mob show without guys getting killed? So mm. it wouldn't happen to the regular. You know, it was going to be someone at the end of the year. It was Pussy. It was, uh, you know, um, Jackie Jr. And I guess that was the big hit. Richie April got it. Uh, Ralphie. Ralphie. Yeah. I mean, Joe Pantoliano is very established. Um, he's well known. He'll always work. Mm. Um, yeah. So, were you ever around yeah. any of any of the actors when they found out that their uh, character was getting killed off? 
be. No, I think that uh, David might have called him in and told him, depending mm. on the actor. I know when I found out, I went in and talked to him. You know, I was trying to get to season six, <laughs> yeah, second part. And I said what I had to say and, you know, what's, you know, expected and be great if, you know, he could live and still earn. And Tony's, you know, evolved and, you know, he live and let live. And let me speak for about five minutes. And then when I was done, he said, you're going. And I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Has anyone ever successfully talked themselves out of getting uh, script whacked? Um. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, you mean, uh, you know, I think that was once it, it was set, was set. Sure. And, uh, you know, because in his mind, he's got to, you know, a way things are going to happen and fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that we have sort of noticed or maybe suspected about David Chase uh, in the course of making the show is that uh, – he seems to really like uh, fat jokes and like even to the point of like you wonder whether certain people were like cast so specifically so that he could like write more fat jokes into the script. Uh, and then you you ended up losing a bunch of weight in, in the, towards the later seasons. Did you ever uh, like when you're reading scripts and there's like fat jokes about your character, did you ever like get your feelings hurt or was that ever like a thing? Yeah, it bothered me. It definitely bothered me. Now that I think about it, maybe that's why he kept me around. <laughs> I'm watching it, you know. I mean, that's a fucking good point. I never fucking thought about it. Good job there, uh, Vince. <laughs> yeah, uh, as thank far you. as a break, breaking the chair, that was one. Uh, I mean, Ginny Sack is like that. That was like a whole arc about her being fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Bobby I mean, being forced to do Santa Claus. Well, and that you, yeah, but, you know, you start thinking about salads, or you think about a salad, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when they're both standing by the car. Yeah, uh, uh, oh, that was a fat suit he was wearing. Um, oh. yeah, because that stomach was huge. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think about it. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, you bothered me because. I mean, I was always, uh, I was in shape. I mean, I had pictures when I was younger with my wife and I was in shape kind of guy and I took pride on that. And then when I became a chef, I stopped going to the gym and you start eating like an animal, yeah. drinking. I mean, that's the lifestyle for me anyway. Gambling, I was living like a real animal. So, um, um, yeah, it just went all downhill after that. Um, towards like the, the end of the show, I read that, uh, Jim Gandolfini and David Chase would sort of, uh, like they started to have more of a, an adversarial relationship and, and they would get in fights and they sort of had to like take a break after the show was over. Did you ever like witness, uh, w w did any of any of those kind of conflicts ever, uh, happen like on the set while you were around? No, a couple of times, you know, uh, Jimmy was supposed to be there and he didn't show up. Um, but I think that um, the pressure of the show, carrying the show, for the most part, I mean, Edie was in it a lot, but it was Jimmy. It was Jimmy. And um, I think that got to him after a while, you mm -hmm. know? So uh, I never saw them. I'm sure it was in private, maybe in his trailer. Mm. Maybe in the office, maybe privately. I never witnessed anything. Mm -hmm. Dave? Anyone say hello? My new pals? <laughs> hey. Who, who are we about to talk to? That's uh, Viviana. Say hello right there. Hi. Hey, Viviana. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> so... Who was uh, like on the set? You mentioned uh, Tony Sirico. Who was like the who? Who are the biggest Sirico. ball busters? Uh, uh, sorry, who are the biggest ball busters on the uh, on the set among the actors? Uh, Sirico was definitely. Mm. Um, Ralphie could be Joe Pinliano. Um, yeah, Benzant maybe. Yeah. 
Um, did you ever see the uh, the group shot of uh, us in front of Satrials? Oh, yeah. Everyone's in it except Walnuts. He wasn't working that day. <laughs> I think it was the Columbus Day Parade. Mm-hmm. The Columbus Day. But Furio's got the uh, thing hates Columbus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, there's the scene where uh, Bacala is reading from the newspaper. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's having a hard time and he keeps m- m- messing it up, his lines. And. Uh, Paniano was laughing and, and wouldn't stop laughing, which made him even more conscientious. <laughs> and he was getting really pissed. So you could see in that that photo that Steve has got his, his mug on because he's still pissed at Paniano. And every time I see that picture, I think about that. And uh, um, it's pretty funny. Uh, you know, but listen, we've all been there. And uh, I remember uh, doing a scene where Sylvia was in the acting as the uh, acting boss. And he was on the toilet reading the paper. And I have a problem with uh, Walnuts because I gave him this job. And he said, I thought there was going to be 300000 there. Yeah. And he got hit in the nuts. <laughs> and he's limping. And so we got to give money to maybe Edie. I, I yeah, owe yeah, money. yeah. To Carmela, yeah. So I walk into the bathroom. And he already starts, he goes, uh, lady room's next door. Yeah. And um, and then I said, I could reach her from here. And he goes, oh, I was like, bedlam over here. He had no idea what went through. And he's telling me the story. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So give me my, you know, I want my cut, 150000 I think. He goes, what? You're lucky if there was what? And I go, hey, Paulie, I cased it myself. So, and this is where I couldn't stop laughing. And uh, he goes, uh, have a donut, you're delirious. And <laughs> then I start to make a move on him toward him. And he tells me, back up, Bluto. And those lines, uh, for some <laughs> reason, I just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and uh, they had a cold break. We tried it about five, six, seven times. Yeah. But he just uh, it's just one of those things where you just can't stop. So yeah. the fact all of us trying to remember lines and so on and so forth. Sure. Was there anyone like would that you would say was like the biggest like uh, pain in the ass on set? Like who was either always fucking uh, trying to to fuck stuff up or trying to throw anyone off? Or no, no, we were all really worked with each other. We all had each other's back. We know that we were working on something great, Mm. and we all tried to do our best and help each other. I mean, once in a while, you know, things happen. You get like you know. Have a little fun, but for the most part, it, it wasn't like that. Uh, you know, it's like all for one and one for all, I guess. Yeah, were there any like scenes that stand out as ones that were like the toughest to shoot or were like a tough day on set for any reason? Kind of been uh, long days, hot days, the church scene. Uh, I think it's uh, Johnny Sack's daughter. Yeah, the mm-hmm. wedding. It was a brutal, brutal, brutal hot day. There's no air conditioning. You're in a suit, trying to stay cool. It was crowded. Everybody was in the church. That was a rough day. Uh, yeah. You're just glad it's over. That's That stood out to me, I think. Is it, like, are you able to sort of gauge uh, how popular, like, The Sopranos is at in, at any given moment based on, like, how much you get uh, recognized or that people come up to you when you're when you're out in public? You know, it's kind of worldwide. Mm-hmm. I mean, not that I travel the world, but I know there's fans from all over. Yeah. Um, back during maybe 05, 06, in between seasons. I was down in Athens, Georgia at some drag racing event <laughs> that I was doing something with. And there were fans and I never would expect, you know, down deep in deep in the south, you know. But um yeah. um I haven't run into any Bushmen that oh, uh, yeah. were fans. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I ran into any of those or any uh, sort of pygmies. Yeah, well, at some point you'll you'll run into a pygmy who's seen you and be like, "Hey, it's hey, Gino, Gino from the, <laughs> yeah, from the bakery." Yeah, maybe you can pitch that travel show. 
<laughs> um, just in terms of like some Sopranos lore, because it's like uh, there's there's a lot of open ended questions that uh, that that happen on the Sopranos. Uh, one of them is a theory about Phil Leotardo, uh, right. which I'm not sure if this is something that has just been brought up recently or uh this is something that was like going around at the time of filming but the the theory is that he is uh was a closeted gay character in the show in the show yeah have you heard that well i do call him a uh uh metros metrosexual uh-huh. right <laughs> yeah which i don't even know what that was <laughs> and then um <laughs> Um, and then the whole thing, when he comes to kill me, he comes out of the closet. He does come out of the closet. Yeah. Right. But, but, uh, was, that, is that something at the time that was discussed that like he was, uh, that he was doing the murder, that he was murdering you because he had some sort of, uh, you know, like closeted, uh, you know, gay ten- tendencies or is that, is that, is there nothing to that? You know, it might've been an inside thing that only David knows. Hmm. Uh, you know, he sort of like grips the bed when I'm getting, you know, pummeled. Right. And that might have been like a turn on to him. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's um, possible. You know, so uh, that was a possibility. What? Uh, but I never really heard. Mm. What was Frank Vincent like? Is he he had like he was like an insult comic with like Joe Pesci? Didn't they have like a a stand up act back in like the sixties together? Well, or something they had like a band. They had a band. Okay. Oh wow. So I think uh, Pesci was a drummer, or Frank was a drummer, and one of them was a singer. You know. Yeah, I think Pesci was a singer. Uh, yeah, Pesci was a singer. So they had a band. So they went way back. Sorry, from uh. All over my uh, camera. Oh, that's uh, fine. Yeah, I'm trying to cook one-handed. <laughs> Sorry. Because uh, uh, she's got to well, eat. So, what was it like man. working with the uh, with uh, Frank Frank Vincent? Is uh, he's you know not... I didn't have many scenes with him. I didn't have a lot of scenes with him. Uh, you know, we, we had. Uh, I'm talking in the. Uh, I don't know whose house, and you know what can I get to be though? Just a little. Hot water or warm water with lemon. Yeah, right. People of that line. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I know at the wedding we were at the uh, same table. Mm-hmm. I was doing Raging Bull lines from them because, like I said, it was one of my favorite movies. Sure. I was putting tissues in uh, my mouth. <laughs> and I was doing the Robert De Niro, hey, Ray, you never got me down, Ray. You never went yeah. down. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a treat for me to do that for him. <laughs> I wonder how many times in his life that guy's heard, "Hey, you fuck my wife, you f- you fuck my wife." <laughs> no, well, that, that's uh, that's uh, De Niro to Pesci, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. No, for for her, uh, Frank Vincent, it's got to be get your fucking shine box. Yeah, he's probably right, heard yeah, that his entire yeah. life. Right. Yeah. Another guy. I, rest, in, rest in peace. Yeah. Do you have any stories about like meeting fans and about how they've reacted to your character in the portrayal? Because you know, at the time that the episode came out or that the your season arc came out, um, it was kind of um, it was a big deal. I mean, people hadn't seen that real of a portrayal of like uh, homosexuality and someone having to like go into hiding because of it. Did, uh, yeah, did you get it, any it was, feedback? Uh... Yeah, it was groundbreaking. Uh, I can, you know, it, uh, you never saw it, right? Uh, back then, and um, I don't think I was married yet. Mm. So, and I got married late, and I said, well, "Let me get married. I better get married quick here because people are gonna really think that I'm yeah, gay." <laughs> so it was a rush job. <laughs> uh, by the way, I'm gonna show you something. Mm. You can see this. That picture? Oh you wow! Have you seen that? Oh wow! Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I've seen that one. Yeah, me neither. That's my wedding. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. And you're still uh, uh, happily married to the same woman. Still married to the same woman, happily. Well, you know, we have our moments. I'm not the easiest <laughs> guy. I'll be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, of course. So, 
so in the episode where uh, they discover that Vito's gay at the at the leather bar, like what what did you think? Do you remember what you were thinking the first time they like came in and showed you the wardrobe that you were gonna have uh, for that? I had to go up for a fitting, and I said, "I'm wearing that." They said, "Yeah," <laughs> and I said, uh, "I said I- I'm not doing this without dungarees on." I said, <laughs> Nobody wants to see me in assless guys. <laughs> me. Yeah, so, and everybody was. And those people in that, that scene were real guys that they went out and got from the West Village. Or the East Village, or... One of the villages. Of the village. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, that was interesting. And... Um, did you yeah. uh, did you improvise that move where you're doing kind of like a, a cowboy with a lasso? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to dance, and you know, I, I'm very, I like, I'm very, I'm very happy that I have my own gift. You know, when someone's happy, they got a raise, they send them that gift. <laughs> yeah, that's and a I, great I, gift. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if that was a move, like uh, you know, I didn't know what to do, so I did the old lasso move, and yeah, uh, it's a great move. It's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> and um uh who was I, I think it was Buscemi directing or maybe Terry Winters they mm-hmm. said this is the last take do what you want to do and I don't know if they were implying but I you know I gave him a kiss um just because I said let me just go for it you know what I mean yeah so uh and he was a real guy he was a personal shopper at Barney's <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I forgot that was a job that existed back then. The personal shop. Now it's all uh, on on an app. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah personal shop. Uh, that was a uh, a pivotal moment, as they say. Oh sure. Was there ever anything that you shot that you remember enjoying that like didn't make it into the show? Um, I think there's a deleted scene on YouTube. I'm, I mean, I. Uh, a gazebo on the water, maybe talking to my kids. No, I was talking to Ty. I forget. I had a deleted scene that wound up on YouTube. Mm. I don't know how it wound up there. But, um, uh, yeah, no, I, I, not really. Okay. And, I'm, uh, I'm just, hold on one second. I'm just going to call my daughter. Oh, sure. Uh, do you get sour cream with that? I don't know. There's guac and uh, salsa. Gotta like make it yourself. Is that right? Like that? How's that look, though? Pretty good, right? That looks great. I'm sorry. So, did you ask me? Oh, uh, I well, I have another question for you. Um, yeah. With regards to um, Finn de Trollio. Yeah. Uh, the my arch nemesis. Yeah, your arch nemesis. By the way, that scene when he comes out of the porta potty is my favorite scene. Oh, is yeah. that your favorite scene? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, because I, I I did that in two takes. Yeah, and I just enjoyed that so much um, doing that, and uh, I just love the way that whole thing is told. Do, do you yeah. uh, do you do you keep in touch with uh, the actor who played Finn at all? Um, no. Oh no, no. <laughs> the only actor I really keep in t- touch with is Gigi. Um. Uh, who who played Gigi? John Fiore. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, is, is Gigi the one who uh, died on the toilet? Bowl. Died on the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Capo de Crapo, we call them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. We've talked about uh, his death uh, quite extensively on the podcast, mostly in just like the idea that he would get his sides and find out that he's dying on the toilet. <laughs> Yeah. What, what I mean, did he share with you his thoughts about that? Uh, he wasn't happy. <laughs> you know, because he only lasted three episodes as a captain. Right. So, um, yeah, he wasn't happy about that, and he wished he would have had a longer run. He's a mm-hmm. tremendous actor. I like John a lot. We have a lot of fun. He's from Boston. He had a great sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah, he got that whole episode where you really – like got into uh, the background of that character and it got you really invested in that character. And then at the end of the episode, it's like, oh yeah, he just died on the shitter. 
They yeah. did. They, they pulled the old smash cut to funeral move, which uh, always cracks me up. But it's got to be suck if you're that actor. Yeah, Vince, uh, do you want? Uh, do you have any questions to to wrap up the interview? I, I think I, I think I got all my questions that I wanted to uh, ask out of the way. Hey, there. You did have a lot. Had a lot of questions. I got to be honest with you. I'm a, yeah. I'm a curious man. What can I say? He is. <laughs> uh, is. That's the whole thing about doing an interview. Have questions, and they were good. They were both um, well thought out. And uh, you know, I've done stuff where they some of them haven't even watched the show, so I get really annoyed. I yeah, I, I cut them short. But uh, this was a lot of fun. Hopefully, I had uh, some insight. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I look at you. Um, uh, Matt and mm-hmm. I, 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 I. Every time I look at you, I think of John Turturro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he looks like I t- get that. He looks. Like I get that John a lot. Turturro and John Steinbeck. It's uh, yeah. Ah, uh, John Steinbeck again, yeah. and actually uh, Alfred Molina a little bit. I don't know why. <laughs> I could see that i got a yeah. yeah i got a little bit of all of them in me except for like a like a jewish version you know now, so i'm what, like what do you do matt what, what do i do yeah oh i'm a comedian stand up and then uh and then podcasting uh uh-huh. and and where do you live in la uh i live in eagle rock like uh near pasadena oh yeah, yeah i was in west hollywood and what about you vince I am a writer and cultural critic, and uh, yeah, and I live in uh, Fresno. Um, a writer for just writer in general, or writer for uh, I write tabloid. And- I know I write for a, a website called Uprocks. It's like oh, uh, it's like blogs and stuff. How dare you? <laughs> Is it U T R O X? Yeah, uh, two X's, but yeah. I think I might have been in that. I think they might have wrote about my cooking. Uh, that's oh, that sounds like it's. Uh, very possible. I don't. Yeah, that's, I wasn't the writer. That, on that sounds one. right. They might have picked up the story, or they did a story on it, as I recall. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. I just found it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Small there. world. Small <laughs> world. So is there, um, is there, um, any part of you that actually uh, wants to, uh, or is there a reason why you won't do uh, the other Sopranos podcast? The other, the other one, or the others? Oh, the 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 other uh, the other one um, with uh, with Steve and Michael. Uh, well, first of all, it's over. Second oh, of all, that's right. Yeah. Second of all, I had a falling out one of them. Ah. Uh, it, it got nasty. Mm. And uh, and then they seemed to have forgotten. And they asked me to come on. I said, "I'm thinking to myself, Are you kidding me?" Yeah. So I said, no, I'm, I'm not interested. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't have a falling out with us because we yeah. we were very happy to have you on and uh, and talk to you about The Sopranos. This is, this is probably our first and only uh, cast member guest that we will have uh, as we are also nearing the end of our run. But, yeah, and uh, I'm very I'm, I'm honored. I mean, you still have... Uh, let's see, eleven left. Yeah, yeah, still got eleven left. We're almost, we're almost at the end. So, hey, you know, if you, uh, if you know of, you know, anyone else who's like, hey, <laughs> I want to be interviewed on this Sopranos podcast, we're right here waiting. Well, uh, I actually was supposed to do a. Uh, well, I don't know how many people like like people, you know, say, hey, you want to do a podcast, and it's not even a Soprano one; it's just a podcast in general. I usually say, nah, you know, because, uh, you know, I it's just, and listen, it's how long is it? 15 years now? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, how many times are you going to answer the same questions? Sure. And I do it, you know, my dinners are two, two a week, you know, usually. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm there 10 hours and, uh, you know, I, uh, Tell stories and answer questions. So sure, imagine we got to do one of those, Matt. Yeah. We got to do one. We definitely got to do one. We got to go to your dinners. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to be invited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just we're just inviting ourselves. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. we'll just we'll just show up. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I I raffled I raffled one off because uh, so many people wanted to do them, and I said that'd be kind of fun. So I did the seventy five dollars each, hundred people. Mm. And I just got a winner. 
But um, for the second prize, I was going to raffle one off, and then the people that win get invited to the person that won. But people were saying, "Why aren't strangers in my house?" Right. <laughs> so yeah. I, actually, that, that's a little funky. Yeah. But it's usually, uh, um, you know, big fans that want to get it for their husband, their brother, their father, sure. or just fans in general. I've been to uh, several of them, but they know lines inside and out for 10 hours. <laughs> these guys are just throwing lines at me. I mean, it's it's actually pretty funny. Um, so listen, I wish you guys uh, tremendous success. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun um, uh, doing it. Yeah, and, thank you uh, so much for for coming on and talking to us about uh, yeah about your time there, yeah, and we really appreciate very it. Much so, uh, my my pleasure, my pleasure. Good luck, good luck, and enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. and to all your uh, listeners and followers and so on. All thank right. you so yeah, much. Thank you. Enjoy your success. I learned that line <laughs> from right. The Sopranos. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Joe. Well, you know what they said about Vito. What. He's great on the piano, but he sucks on the organ. <laughs> Use it in the Iraq, my friend. That's a gift. All right, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, I'll see you. All right, take care. Bye. 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 Podcast.